So I was walking along one day, you know, minding my own business, innocent physics teacher in the heartland, and uh, my students began returning tests to me. Like it was my fault, right? And suddenly, there's this problem. Boom, 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 look at the arrows, boom. And this problem warrants some attention. Here's the thing. I wrote out the problem for you in nice pretty colors. There's this soap film, and it's illuminated with monochromatic light, and it has a wavelength that's given there, 600 nanometers right there. There's even a pretty picture, which I'll draw for you right now. You have to think of yourself as observing this bubble, and the bubble has n equals 1.25. Out here, we've got n of air, and I guess n of air is going to be approximately 1. So we put n equals 1 out here, and n equals 1 out there. And you know there's got to be some reflected light, so they show the light coming right here. But what they don't tell you is you're not in the bubble. So yeah, you got to stop living life inside a bubble. Because if you're thinking you're inside the bubble, you got to pay attention to these words right here. Reflected light. Reflected light. Let me run through really fast why the reflected light undergoes strange patterns. It is quite simple, and there's a full video on this somewhere else, so you can check that out. You've got light coming in here, and some of it will be reflected at this interface. When it's reflected at the interface, it will get a phase shift. Everybody say phase shift with me. Phase shift. Thanks, Internet. Phase shift. Oh, I had one more thing to say to the Internet. This is a big number, so thanks. Thanks. Stick around. Maybe I'll make some more videos. All right. Back to work. Phase shift. Phase shift. And the phase shift is 180 degrees, which is the same thing as 2 pi. I might call it either one. Who knows? But that's because it's like a wave hitting a harder interface. So what we'll call this impedance mismatch of the media causes a reflection and also causes a phase shift because we're going up to a, a tougher medium. And the same thing happens in uh, mechanical waves and gosh, and sound waves and all kinds of awesome things. And there is also light that continues here that light continues here in the thicker medium and also reflects, right? Because that light, uh, well, here's another impedance um, discontinuity. And so, I mean, sure, we'll have some keep going through here and that's um, mildly interesting. But I want to focus on this light that's reflecting back here and it's coming out here and also heading to your I. But this light right here had a phase shift, and this light right here is just experiencing a phase shift not because of this reflection. Here there's no phase shift, right? It's only experiencing a phase shift because it has traveled longer. So we have to wonder how much waving has gone on right here. And I have to just make two quick statements. Here are my two quick statements. My two quick statements are these. If the reflected light that went through the bubble and reflected off of the inside of the bubble here, if it gets a phase shift because of its additional travel length, that's equal to, uh, oh my gosh. Pi. Sorry. If it's equal to a pi phase shift, if it's equal to 180 degrees, then we're going to have light that constructively interferes. But if this additional length equals, well, I guess one wavelength or uh, two wavelengths or something, then this one will have been shifted by one half of a wave, and this one will have been shifted by one or two or three or four waves, and so we'll get destructive interference. So darkness, this condition to reflect to reflect none of this light, that condition is when this is a wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths in here. So all the equations we're going to see are coming from that, and I'd really prefer if you just re-derive these equations. But if you're the kind of person who likes to jump into an equation, you will find an equation sheet. Sometimes teachers give you equation sheets. Look, here's a lot of equations. This is a very cute equation sheet. There are really four equations for bubbles and films that are on top of something. Like um, you might have glass here and some thin film here and air here and air here. So the equation for light coming into here and bending there and bending there and reflecting off of here and going there and there and there, this, you know, that, oh gosh, they're a little bit different than just a film over here and light coming in there and going like that. Right, 
and then interfering with that light. These two rays interfering are a little bit different than those two rays interfering because the glass probably has N really big and this film is probably gonna have N medium. And now I'm boring you, so let me go on. Let me write these two. This one I'm gonna call a, well, let's call this a bubble. And this guy right here, I will call a film. I'll call it a thin film. I guess bubbles are thin films also, but it's all about whether there's air on either side of it or not. So, the equation that I'm looking at is super cute. It says film max bubble min. That equation, yeah, it really does say that. And it says two times t equals m lambda. And I'm gonna plug in an n right here because I mean the wavelength, what here, I'm using the wavelength in air, the natural outside wavelength unaffected. Of course, I know that the wavelength in the film or bubble is just going to be the wavelength in air divided by n. So that's how I can relate this equation to the one that doesn't have an n in it. And then I've got this other equation, dang, let's switch to purple here, that says film min, this is my very face, favorite one, bubble max, my very favorite one, so, oh, sorry, this is a colon. The equation reads, well, it says, two times n times t equals, now it's not m, but it's m plus a half times wavelength in air. Oh gosh, dang it. All right, we're gonna have to do this problem. We're gonna have to do this problem. So let's really fast go through this problem and we'll re refer back to that as those equations when we need them. The speed of light in the film. Well, that's gonna be pretty easy. We just say that the speed of light in a material is, well, it's the speed of light outside the material divided by the material's index of refraction. So I'm gonna take three times 10 to the eighth. I've got the student who continues remembering it as three times 10 to the sixth. You should not do that. I'm gonna divide it by 1.25 and hit enter. That gives me a speed of 2.4 times 10 times 10 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That was easy. Wavelength of light in the film. This is a little bit of a misleading question because they're leading you down the wrong path. But the wavelength of light in the film is, let's see, wavelength of light. You know what? The problem is they should call it a bubble. Why don't they stick with their terminology, right? Wavelength of light in the bubble is wavelength in bubba or maybe I could call it wavelength n equals normal wavelength divided by the index of refraction. So they're giving us 600 nanometers minus nine. And I'm gonna divide that by 1.25. Cool, so I found a slightly shorter wave, and that's just because um, as it's waving, it's not getting as far because it's slower traveling inside the bubble. So we'll get 4.8 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, which is 480 nanometers. Now it's time for us to get a little bit more room because I want minimum thickness to produce no reflected light. Ha ha! Okay, the minimum thickness to reflect to reflect no light at all. The minimum thickness to reflect no light at all. Is that gonna be film min, film max bubble min? Oh, it is, film max bubble min. And so, uh, the most common error that I found was people were using lambda of the material and plugging in an N right here. So they're actually screwing it up doubly, doing the right thing, but doing it too much. And it also says minimum thickness. So let's find at least a couple thicknesses so we can get our head on straight. This M can be, well in this case it can be one, two, three. It could also be negative one, negative two, negative three. I suppose it's unreasonable to say that M could be zero here, right? It's unreasonable to say that M could be zero. All right, so let's jump, oh, right, because that would mean the thickness would be zero. That's kind of a ridiculous answer. We're not gonna get no reflected light from, oh, wait, we are. Oh, okay, that's interesting. We're gonna get no reflected light from nothing <laughs> if there's no thickness of it. But they're probably looking for us to actually have a bubble existing. 
I think that's an implied condition of this problem. So let's continue and try to find some thicknesses. Here's a thickness. Thickness equals, let's say, lambda air. I'm going to plug in m equals 1 here, and then I'm going to divide by 2 times n. And I'm going to do another one of these. Thickness equals, let's see, I'll plug in lambda is 2. Uh, sorry, m is 2, and I'm going to get 2 lambda air divided by 2n. Let's plug in m is negative 1 and see what happens. Thickness is negative lambda air. Wait a second. I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable because I think I have a negative thickness. So let's eliminate that one, and we'll eliminate all those guys right there. So we've got ourselves a system, right? We've got ourselves a system, and which one of these is the smaller thickness? Now, if I keep plugging in higher and higher m's, you see I'm going to get m is 3, which is going to be an even bigger thickness. This guy right here is the minimum thickness that's going to produce no reflected light. Now, the interesting thing is there's no plus a half right here, but you've got to remember, please remember, that the plus one half, the phase shift right here, is happening at the front interface. So if I have a full wave in here, one full wave in here, then I'm going to have destructive interference, which is going to get us to that minimum light that they were requesting. So all I need to do is take the wavelength in air, 600 nanometers. And I'm going to divide that sucker, oh, open parentheses, right, by 2 times the index of refraction, 1.25 right there. And I find the minimum thickness, the minimum thickness to not reflect. And that sucker is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. 240 nan. Whoa, that's cool. That is one half of the wavelength of the light in the bubble. And I suppose that makes an awful lot of sense. All right, because it's got to go, oh yeah, because it's got to go down and then back up. If it goes half a wavelength down and half a wavelength back up, then you've got yourself a full wave. So we have destructive interference with this one here that had a half wave phase shift. All right, let's do the other problem. The other problem says minimum thick, check, we've done number three correctly, minimum thickness to produce maximum intensity of reflected light. So we'll go down to this equation right here, which is film min bubble max. See this guy right here? And it says we have to do m plus a half. <clears throat> so I'm going to try out some m's and see what we get. I'm going to try, try m equals negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, here's what we get. Thickness equals, I'm going to try negative 1 first, negative 1 plus a half. I get negative 1 half lambda air divided by 2 times n. This is a negative number, frowny face. I don't like negative thicknesses. Let's try another one. Let's switch to a different color. What do we have here? Teal. Oh, is it aquamarine or not? Nobody knows. T equals, okay, now I'm going to plug in m equals zero. I just get regular one half lambda air divided by 2n. Now that seems promising. This is just lambda air divided by 4 times the index of refraction. Here, let's see if this one's bigger though. We're going to try m equals 1. Thickness equals, oh no, now I get 3 halves times lambda air over 2n. Dang, that's 3 times bigger. Oh man, 3 lambda air over 4n. Dang, does this remind you of a half-closed tube? Are there even harmonics that are missing? How odd. Wow. All right, let's do that calculation right there, and we'll finish this problem. My uh, la wavelength in air is... 600, is that right? 600 nanometers? And then I'm supposed to divide it by, open parentheses, 4 times 1 point, whoa, times 1.25. And my answer, oh my goodness, my answer is a quarter wave. I find that that minimum thickness, minimum to bright light, the minimum thickness to bright light is one quarter of the wavelength inside the bubble, which is 1.2 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So let's go back to that picture just one more time and figure out what we've just said. We've said that if we want bright light, we need a phase shift inside this bubble of one half of a wave. 
So I'm gonna take one quarter of the wave inside the bubble and shift it a quarter wave, and then I'm gonna come back out and shift it another quarter wave. That's a full half wave shift. What did I say, full half wave? That's great. <laughs> that is a half wave shift, which equates to the half wave shift that's fundamental based on the interface right here. And we get constructive interference only when we have a quarter wave thickness bubble and destructive interference when we have a half wave thickness bubble. And of course, the thickness depends on the wavelength in the material. So if we had a, uh, oh man, wow. If we had an N that was even higher, would this thickness decrease or increase? I'm gonna let you puzzle on that one right there. If I wanted to get a better material here, like a, um, a material that slows down light even more, would I need more thickness or less thickness in order to get constructive and destructive interference? How would that change? Goodbye.